Bienvenidos. It is Karen here in Tennessee. It's Bonnie down in Florida. Satan's breath is our weather. Butthole. <laughs> but <Thumb>. yeah. <laughs> and I was just saying, like, the weather here is just starting to break. Not that it won't change its mind and go back and forth. Yeah. But there's just a tad of reprieve. So I'm excited. And I know people are excited about it because we walked outside the other day and you could smell the fall smell of someone doing a fire pit. Mm-hmm. They shouldn't be doing a <laughs> fire pit. It was still like 80, but they were very excited, obviously. And for me, what's exciting in fall, I have a friend who gets so rude about my love of pumpkin spice <laughs> products. Oh. Mm-hmm. That sounds actually like they're academic or intelligent mm-hmm. or, or jealous. something like that to me. Or jealous. Mm. That, I think that so. I happen yeah. to like <laughs> that I have the same palette of all the other ladies my age. Pumpkin uh, spice. You fit everything. in. Go ahead. Fit in. I'll just be that one person that's original. No. Um, hey, yeah. I was going to say... Please rate and review us. But I was also going to say, I want to read you this cute DM that we got from someone named Amy. Well, I know Amy, but Amy today. She said, I had a dream about you and Bonnie. You were dancing around. There were costume and set changes. I thought you must have been really great blue screen ideas. It was fun to see you guys acting silly. We just listened to your five-year letter sewed in the car last night. Here's hoping for five more years. Wow. Crazy. But, and then I said, you're sweet, and that's really us. We came to you in your dreams. We're the messiahs. But um, this, this is it, Bonnie. We're finally, step one has happened. <laughs> Getting into the dream life That's right. People. You know, step two, and on and on. Yeah. Don't fear going to sleep. (laughs) No. Enjoy it. Listen to us. (laughs) Let us lull you to bed. Uh, The other day when we were having our sponsor Zoom call, somebody mentioned something that was part of that Duggar family memoir. Yeah. Where Mm -hmm. they would say the word Nike. I was saying that. Thank you for paying attention. Oh, somebody else said it, too. Your pumpkin latte, (laughs) spice latte, fake chemicals. Somebody else, somebody was saying it. And then I I had this moment of, wait a minute, I know that. And I think what happened was I fell asleep with one podcast on and it bumped into another one where they were the featured subject. (laughs) And they mentioned that Nike thing because... If you had seen my face, it would have been total confusion of, oh, my God, worlds are colliding. And, you know, sometimes you think (laughs) you make something up and then sometimes you go, oh, no, I just heard that when I I was sleeping. Right, right. That one is from I'm listening to the newest. I think this one's Jill. Could be Jessa, could be Jeremiah, um, Duggar, her new book, Counting the Costs, and I'm listening to it. But two things. So what the Nike thing means is that the family had a code word for when someone sassy walked by or inappropriate or there was something on someone's shirt. Right. Worldly, secular, Um Someone would say Nike, and all the family would immediately look down at their shoes, which I don't think are (laughs) Nike, but anyway. um, So they could avoid eye contact and not not be tempted. But I did like that the mother, Michelle, when the kids are like, oh, that person's bad, she's like, no, let's not judge that person because we live differently. They might not have had the opportunity to learn to learn things and all that. Um, But the other thing, I like listening to it. And I told Mo, if you guys haven't listened to our Duggar episodes, when we had Mo, nearly the Duggar expert in the world on, she's been reading the book, 
with her eyeballs. Um, I have been yeah. listening with my earballs. <laughs> and the way that the homeschooled grown woman mm-hmm. reads her book is so fascinating because you can tell she's reading it as if she has read books all of her life to her younger children. So, so she's, she's reading, reading an her adult own book. The book that she wrote, she's reading it. Right. Okay. Yes. And she's definitely doing it with this sort of teacher to young kids. Right. And it isn't bad or anything like that. You can just pick up on that that's been her whole life is when she read, she would be reading to kids of some sort. Because, again, homeschooled and they folded on (laughs) each other to read to the youngest. Of all sorts. Yeah. Man, they've got one of every kind. That segues us perfectly into what we're talking about today. Contraception. Skirts. What? Yes. <laughs> Long skirts. That's right. It's We're going to teach you so much stuff. Well, I listened to one guy's YouTube, and he pointed out that it's not conception. It's contra opposed to conception. Oh, no. I didn't think of that. I know. Do you remember, I've told this story before, because I was super sheltered growing up. Um, uh, uh, well, not super. Now that we know, like, shiny, happy people, yeah, I'm not talking right, like that. Right. I'm just talking like, you know, just general Christian sheltered. And, and sheltered in- by default with our neighborhood that was cozy and everybody Mm -hmm. was just nice right we didn't grow up in queens yeah outside you know it was just that's the way it was absolutely and I was in 10th grade and I remember I think her name was Mrs. Riser and she taught geometry and we took a test, and I was supposed to write contrapositive. Uh-huh. And after I turned it in, I sat down. I went, oh, no. And I went up there, and I said, can I have my test back? Can I, can I have my sleep? Mm-hmm. Because I'd written contraception. Right. Because <laughs> I knew it meant something, but, Bonnie, I didn't know what it meant. I was in 10th grade, and I didn't know what the word Contraceptive. I just yeah. knew I'd heard it before, and it sounded similar. But at the, it, to but, be fair, yeah. in tenth grade, if you said birth control, that's what we would have called it, or the pill. Contraceptive yeah. was such totally. a grown-up bowel movement in place of poo. Well, kind now of. see, that's my home. Yeah, now. I know. Well, because <laughs> we said all that stupid stuff because we had medical parents, but. I also, they used to always say, why don't you take this as a prophylactic? Right. So when we <laughs> learned about rubbers being prophylactics, I was like, I don't like to hear my parents say that anymore. Exactly. And I would rather them not. And I bet they never once said contraceptive to you. Did you hear little tippy taps? No, I just saw doggy? the door open. <laughs> oh, it's a ghost. I'm here. He can't see me. I'm here. Aww. Okay. I just want to take a little dog break to say that I think I told you that my dog, who's 16, had a big cyst on his neck. Yes. That was gross. Yeah. It's gone. Yeah. I don't know where it is. (laughs) I don't think they're supposed to go. But anyway. Could he have scratched it with a sharp toenail and it googed out Uh, and it's somewhere and you're going to find it crusty? (laughs) Okay. All right. Let's go on to crusty vaginas. Contrapositive. All right. Birth control. (laughs) Let's tell you about geometry and everything you need to know. I would like to start where we have... I would like to start where this comes in from religion, because sure, because when Karen said, "Let's talk about funny, ridiculous ways that people thought that they could prevent pregnancy," I said, "Well, okay," and she's like, "It ties into religion, and it so does." And I looked it up, and here it is: the Bible on contraception. 
Two parts of the Bible are often quoted to show God's disapproval of birth control. First, he demanded his people to be fruitful and multiply. This is Old Testament shit, too, that he demanded yeah, this. I mean, what else would... There was nothing else there to was do. Nothing. There, wasn't there were two people. There, wasn't... there were two exactly. people. Okay. <laughs> and contraception, it says, is seen as flouting that instruction. And then second, Onan, am I saying his name correctly? Like Conan, Onan. Well, from what I remember of New Testament, Onan, yeah, sure, was killed by God <laughs> for spilling his seed. That's in quotes, and it says yeah, that is often interpreted as divine condemnation of coitus interruptus. Okay, that means I. Suppose. I want to come back to Onan <laughs> there because yeah. If I can just go ahead and say that a very popular method, especially among maybe the, you know, sweet Christian sort of influencers, oh, is what is called, dear readers, as the pullout method. <laughs> but guess what that does? Well, it doesn't do that 100% is, of the job. No, it sure doesn't. But it also is, you just reminded me that it's the same thing as Onan, because you're spilling your seed somewhere. Right. And it ain't in the person. And they're condemning him for that in the Bible. Right. However. We hate it. How do we know spilling his seed doesn't mean he was spilling it on his own from making his seed conjure up without a woman being there. <laughs> I think that was a long it's a long way roundabout to say it. way. <laughs> so how do I'm we know not that? sure because because it wasn't until the New Testament till Jesus started really watching everyone masturbate. <laughs> Old Testament, Ew. God looked at the couples. Any man and his 14 underage concubines, the holy marriages of the Old Testament. So, I, you know, it's just a story. It's just... First of all, I do say that it is a story, and when it was written, men wrote it. Just keep this that is in correct, mind. Amanda. So, or, or they retold it if they didn't have words to put on a piece of paper or a tree or so, what have you. Please describe how <laughs> someone with pictures wrote Onan's story. <laughs> Spilling his seed everywhere, like a flower girl in a wedding. Oh, my God. <laughs> so I think that these two things that people are gripping on, they're just, mm -hmm. they're, they're using this as their basis for everything. But they don't take all the other Old Testament crazy shit no. and go with it no, no. all these years later. And I don't think they, that that's fair. No. It's not fair. It's absolutely not fair. If you're going to pick this the one, other... you can't cherry pick which Old Testament bullshit you want. I'm sorry, that's saying that the Bible's not... You know, I don't want to make fun of people for what they believe, I don't mean bullshit. So oh, I do. I mean, but, yeah, I know you do. <laughs> you can't pick one thing that seems outdated from the Bible and not take all the others with it. I know. And so when we talk about the Old Testament, I always like to be clear for the new listeners, it can sound, uh, if you didn't know what we're trying to refer to, anti-Semitic because it's the Torah, the Tonka, the Old Testament, but in Christian beliefs, the Old Testament changes because the New Testament is overlaying it. So we're looking at it as the collection of books that were written to fulfill the New Testament, which is all BS, but you know what we're saying. Um, and absolutely, so the one that people talk about a lot is the one in Numbers 5 about God telling the priests how to conduct abortions, like I never heard that growing up. Yeah, right. And people are like, no, that didn't happen. I'm like, it's right there. You can look it up. And it was about the Old Testament law. If, if a husband felt his wife was cheating and had, you know, was pregnant with another man's wife, one, if we're talking about the Old Testament, do you really think 
if that woman was carrying another baby that she chose to have sex with someone else. Right, right. Seems to me a very harsh society. But the other thing is, what if you just wanted to get rid of your wife? Oh, yeah. And she was pregnant. And you're like, priest, please give her that bitter water God told you to. (laughs) Right, right. And then wife number two. (laughs) And wife number three. So a little bit further into all of the stuff about Onan, (laughs) Onan, whatever, it says God might have been angry with him for having sex for a purpose other than having children. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it supports the idea that there's only one kind of morally good sexual act, sex between a man and a woman who are married and who are having sex to produce children. And secondly, it says God may not have been angry with Onan for preventing con- wait for preventing conception, but for failing to honor a commandment to produce a child with his dead brother's wife. So yeah, yeah, yeah Onan. Onan. <laughs> so so that interpretation doesn't have any application to like our current times and it says the act that Jewish law required him to perform would nowadays be regarded as rape since the widow's consent was not required and this makes the story mm. a very dubious foundation for moral it's argument very that is so and i mean could you blame him maybe also picturing his brother at one point and going this feels wrong <laughs> when you go like that is a good thing you just did, Onan, or whatever. Well, I guess when there were four people in the world, I don't know where he falls in the whole. <laughs> <laughs> he's a little later, but still. A little, not much. Still, he's yeah. still with his sister-in-law, so. So, then I was watching this video where a man who I believe is Catholic was explaining to everybody. That's where the guy got the contraception definition. Mm. He mm. said mm-hmm. that not having sex during the time of month where the wife is the most fertile is not the same uh-huh. as preventing it once you're actually having sex. So his his way that is of God is don't do it at all. And where contraception mm-hmm. in their mind is wrong is do it, but but put a block between sperm and egg. And that's what they disagree with. And he says, it's okay. just like saying, oh, grandma's not doing well, should we kill her or just wait for her to die? (laughs) And he said, euthanasia (laughs) is very different from dying naturally. And I thought, okay, that's a great use of logic and analogy. But at the same time, if grandma's not doing well, don't give her that pill that'll help her. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, or don't have anyone spill their seed near her um (laughs) that's yeah so my logic (laughs) i I have the problem with the logic of well let's not prolong life then if we are not to be the ones deciding about it yeah exactly oh but that doesn't get into anybody's fucking youtubes and p.s so many thousands of people are watching youtube videos from people who have very, very strict beliefs, it is insane. Yep. I know. It it's a worry insane. when you see things. Or I, uh, when I talk about the stuff I found, just the amount of misinformation that's liked. But back to your Catholic thing, I uh, made myself listen to a <laughs> Catholic rosary doodly do meditation podcast about yeah. contraception and i happen to have it right here and it'll fold into what you're saying if i may you may, may all right let's listen no sex within marriage it's a good action however contracepted sex is an evil action and no 
intention and no circumstance can justify doing an evil action. Now, God designed women so that they are not always fertile. Really? In fact, the majority of the time she's infertile. If a couple chose not to have sex on a fertile day, have they committed an evil action? No. No. Choosing not to have sex is not an evil action. If a couple chose to have sex on a non-fertile day, have they committed an evil action? No. The act of intercourse is a total gift of self ordered to new life. They haven't changed anything in the action. Their intention is to express their love. The only thing that's changed is the circumstances. But the circumstances aren't evil. God made the circumstances. A woman is fertile for only a small part of the time. Most of the time infertile. God made those circumstances. If pregnancy doesn't result, it wouldn't be because they sterilized the act of intercourse. Yeah, yeah. It's be- so they're saying the same okay. thing as my guy. Yes, and I didn't play the part where he said the act of sexualness is to sort of emulate God, and I have problems with that, giving your whole body and mind to that person. And when you use contraception, it is a lie because part of what you're doing is you're not giving yourself fully to that person yeah. if you're blocking off your your juices. And I'm Stop like, it. oh, <laughs> is, that how, is that how they see it? Because I really never understood it that way and just to hear them say it's evil i'm like yeah. man if you grew up catholic hearing that kind of stuff uh, the purity culture mess up must be deep okay but even if you didn't grow up catholic a lot of what they believe seeped into culture mm-hmm. that wasn't at all based in from church We got some things from Catholic people. You know, the the Mm -hmm. first one that comes to mind is we went to a Baptist day school, but we had fish on Fridays because, you know what, it was just safer for them to give everybody fish in case there was somebody out there who had Catholic beliefs that bled into, you know, what they were doing. So, and TV, my family explained to me why the Kennedys had so many kids, and it was because they were Catholic, and just like we're mm-hmm. saying, they didn't believe in contraception. So, yeah. like, you get things like that, I want to say through osmosis, but it's not. But mm-hmm. it doesn't mean you have to it's go to a Catholic church sex. to get it. That's right. right. Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah. And, I mean, we all, even though we were Southern Baptists, we didn't feel those things. But I really, and I knew there was a lot of guilt on Catholics. I just didn't understand, I think, the depth of it's evil to use it because you're not being Christ-like and you're lying to your spouse. I'm like, shit, that's like harsh to feel that because it's suddenly, you know, great. Now I have marriage problems because I didn't want to have an 18th baby named Isaiah. Yeah. And this was as recent as 1930. It, I was reading that on New Year's Eve 1930, the Roman Catholic Church banned any artificial means of birth control, like condoms, diaphragms, cervical caps. They were artificial. Um, douches, suppositories, spermicides, all killed or impeded sperm. And those were banned, too. And then, of course, I go to Monty Python's song, Every Sperm is Sacred. So that'll be a different episode. <laughs> Go ahead. So, yeah, according to the church's doctrine, tampering with the male seed was tantamount to murder. I'd like to murder some. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. The, and, I mean, it goes on to the, the patriarchy. I mean, if you, in the Old Testament, New Testament times, in the Catholic Church, when you're like, not only am I special and over people— but even this jizz I can squirt out <laughs> is, you know, is authoritative and shouldn't be killed. That's such a mind fuck. That's true. And there was one 
video that I was watching. This is great. It was about the different contraceptions and some of the crazy things that people used to do, which that's what we're going to get into because that's the funny part. Mm -hmm. And one of the comments on the different kinds of things that people believed would work as contraceptives. So without further ado, here are some ways that people thought they could prevent pregnancies. My grandma always just said, Oh, no. Take a Tylenol. And hold it between your knees. Wow. That's an old one. Yeah. Oh, let me tell you a personal story that's only funny. No. And it does have to be. (laughs) So my friend Jeff, who always volunteered to information, we lived out in Los Angeles. We went to acting school together. He tells me he comes home one day and he doesn't check the mail because he's so excited to go on this date with this girl. They go out. They come back. He gets hot and heavy with her, but he said, well, I had to do the responsible thing. We didn't have a condom, so we didn't do it. And he was expressing how depressed he was about that. You know, he didn't know if she'd go out with him again, or maybe she was just visiting or something like that. So he went to the mail and got a Christmas card from our dance teacher. And our dance teacher was HIV positive. So in his Christmas card, he sent everybody a little condom. (laughs) And Jeff's whole comment was, if I had just checked the mail, I could have had sex that night. (laughs) So here's your moral. It was definitely a Christmas gift, a (laughs) Jesus miracle. Baby Jesus wants you to have sex. Check your mail, people. That's that's the moral (laughs) of the story. Okay, so I'm going to go a little bit further back than Karen and tell you about some of the contraceptives that people in days of yore were (laughs) were utilizing. So are you ready? I am. This is so gross. Okay, so. I love it. All right, there's. All right. So first of all, lemons. So I suppose the lemon, if it's cut in half, not the whole lemon. Oh, yes, yes. You cut it in Uh half and it sort of shapes like a cup. And then Mm -hmm, the acidic mm -hmm. nature of the lemon juice maybe kills the sperm. So a couple things happening. It's a it's a catcher's mitt and (laughs) it's uh, a disinfectant. Right. You have Um, a nice smell, sort of. But I mean, that you would really, people would smell the lemon later. They would know (laughs) what you were doing. Lemon fresh pledge. Or you're just walking and a lemon falls (laughs) out. (laughs) I would assume you take the lemon out after. I'm hoping. Some people forget. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, and then you start thinking, oh, were lemons smaller back then than they are now? <laughs> right. God, I hope. Not, or... not a Florida Ponderosa <laughs> lemon. But there was, so... I saw something like that. It said using a lemon as a penis cap. So oh. I don't know if the woman was responsible. It was the olden days. And... It is still planet Earth. So I'm thinking the woman was responsible for... Yeah. yeah. That sounds likely. Uh, Also, just the idea that they took something from the ground, did they clean it off before they they did that? Why would they pick it from a tree? Why it got to be on the ground? Oh, Um, yeah, that's right. (laughs) Sorry, let me screw (laughs) tree. I, I'm thinking of the second one. I'm thinking of the next one. And get ready, because oh, if you don't read this. I think I just guessed. But okay. I think they would pick it the whole the whole cleaning it issue. But what I would have problems with is if you're like a kid in the family and you have dinner that night and part of it is with half a lemon. Right. I would be upset. <laughs> I would just know. <laughs> That either mom's got the other half up her right then, or right. it's somewhere, and oh god, that'd be upsetting. Oh god. So then, the second thing that the Egyptians used, they would mold crocodile dung 
which is poop for oh. those of you who need a thesaurus. Mm-hmm. Crocodile poop. They would mold it into a shape that was kind of like a cup. And mm. yeah. And and put it inside their vagina. Yeah. And it would be okay, again. Well, why do like they even a need to shape it? Thing. Crocodile dung is gonna keep people <laughs> away. Is that because like a the kitchen's and maybe I think maybe they, they would put sex. honey with it too. So it was like a double uh, a double thing of <laughs> Stop. Um, <laughs> it was a double, again, f- f- a double feature of there's a cup, a catcher's <laughs> bit of some sort, and then there's something uh-huh. sticky that will uh, latch on to the sperm and say, no. So they it's needed something. <laughs> they needed something that would be, I guess, malleable, which was, I hmm. think, more comfortable, they said, than a piece of wood. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah so woo-hoo. good stuff good stuff but it reminds me of the fact that there was a time i think it was maybe a hundred years ago where doctors didn't even wash their hands before performing surgery so right what the hell they didn't know from something being dirty no, so I'm but sure the smell. that this, yeah. <laughs> and then if you do get pregnant, does a baby come out with poop on its head? There's like so many issues that I have with the dung one because, again, people would smell. People would know this woman just had sex, which is funny for us, but I'm also wondering like how that um, sort of labels her because – Women are walking around smelling lemony or crocodile poopy or whatever it is. <laughs> that one, though, wouldn't that more disintegrate to come out rather than you take it out? That That's what I would have thought. That's what I would have thought, too. I mean, how does it stay in such... Well, it depends on the diet of the crocodile, I suppose. I guess so. And I mean, oh you risk God. your life. Did the women have to go get the dung hmm. too? Yeah, probably. They they did yeah. say that there was infection. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> right. There was also my thought of who was the first one to come up with this. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna say it is a man. <laughs> But but still, why would he want poop on? Well, we can. There's all right. Everyone can have their kink. Let's just all say that you're you're all sure. are fine out there. But back then, I can't understand that either. Like I bet. I mean, it would have have to. The dung must have been used for something else too. That they related it to and just thought this is medical. And That's some of the things point. that I found that they still do today, everyone who promotes some of these things always says, listen, this was used in ancient times. Cleopatra did this. So why would we go to Big Pharma? And I'm always okay. like, because the stuff was killing people. <laughs> and it was always a mystery. Today. Right, right. Even like <laughs> the herbs. Knows. Right. Medicine was created because uh, there were people who were allergic to herbs and were having seizures, you know. <laughs> uh. So I didn't want to take a screenshot of this, but y'all can look it up. Apparently, some people also wore weasel testicles strapped around their leg <gasps> while they were having sex. What? It didn't have anything to do, from what I could gather, with the penetration of the man and the <laughs> it, woman. Oh, okay. It, just it wasn't on the woman. genitals. No. It, well, I, you know what? Maybe they had to just put some visual together, but she was... What, how, what else would wearing their testicles do? Yeah. But she had them strapped I around her like thigh. A, probably like know. a talisman, magical-y... <laughs> You know, just... Like a a good luck. I don't know. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So orally in France in the 1600s, they said that ladies drank onion juice. God, 
Why yeah. do women have to go through shit up their crotch and drinking <laughs> onion juice? This is because. horrific. So, and then in Canada, they would oh, grind don't up even go with to a mortar the deep and- wilds of Canada. <laughs> <laughs> they would do like a mortar and pestle of beaver testicles and mix it with moonshine. They're like, well, you didn't get pregnant, but you got drunk. So with testicles. Right. That's <laughs> we're gonna keep on with this list. There were sheaths made from animal intestines, and those were reusable condoms that needed to be oh, washed. Sheets. Okay. <laughs> yes. yes. That needed to be washed in between use, and I promise you, men were not washing those <laughs> in between <laughs> use, because I just think that that's men. They were also very excited to have these reusable condoms because it prevented syphilis in the 18th and the 19th centuries, Ooh, which yikes. leads me to think that people have never really been on board with not having sex as recreation. Correct. I think that's a the lot of double of negatives. The wick is going on outside of marriage and so forth. Yes, people have been hooping it up. <laughs> they have For been centuries. weasel testicling <laughs> all right. out the yin yang. So then, in nineteen fifties, you know what they were they were talking about. The pill. If you, well, Please. it's it's even worse because nobody had access to all of this stuff. If you were a kid and you're out there having sex, you've <laughs> got to have like the folklore Sorry. of what do Don't I say do? Kid. What do I do? Kids are seven. What? Okay. Kids I are seven. When you say kid, I'm like a seven year old. Okay. If you're Rizzo and Frenchy and you don't have uh-huh. access I know. <laughs> to the pill, what you could do. And you shouldn't rely on this for family planning. Is take a bottle of Coca Cola and right. shake it up and put it near your vagina and douche with it. Yeah. Right afterwards. Well, afterwards, I mean, right? I can. So okay. The, yeah. So the rumor was that the acidity of the Coca Cola killed the sperm. And the classic Coke bottle provided a convenient shake and shoot applicator. <laughs> <laughs> and basically, it says soft drink douches are apparently still used to prevent pregnancy in resource poor settings. There are, wow. however, many reasons why women should not rely on this method. Uh, really? Please. Right. And in nowadays, our- <laughs> just use soda water at least because. I'm just all the thinking sugar? all the no. chemicals. Well, the chemicals uh. is what did it. So anyway, it also uh. said, in our study, we mixed Coca-Cola with human semen, a five to one ratio. <laughs> Yikes. And reported that sperm were immobilized within one minute. So that kind of says, oh, maybe it does work. Okay, so I looked it up on YouTube because I thought, well, let's see what other people from the 1950s were talking about. And there's a Mm. woman currently, I don't know what country she lives in, but she has a few different things on her YouTube video, and that's one of them, one of the methods. And people in the comments, God love them, are saying things like, can you tell me what to do if I've had a whole night of lovemaking? Will this work? <laughs> and they're asking specific questions, and they're not do being funny. I need funny. a two-liter <laughs> bottle of Coke? Um, yeah. I looked these up people some of that. Are not, they're the modern not, ones. Oh, good. Okay. So go with yeah, those, because these scary. people aren't it's, kidding. No, they're not kidding. And the amount of people who like it and are like, thank you for this information. Because they don't have resources. Shocking. Right. I, yeah. Yeah. So you look, you tell me oh, one of the other things, and then I'm finished with my part. There, there's, <laughs> there's contraception, and then there's what to do after, oh, my God, you think you're right. pregnant. And yeah. physical exertion was one method that they <laughs> used to try to induce an abortion. And No, thanks. Yeah. It was this belief that prevailed, I guess, until maybe even the 50s, that you could yeah, jump up and it. down and touch mm-hmm. your butt with the heels, with your own heels, after each leap to try to so induce. kick it out of you. 
Yeah. And like leaping like that. So it was also, there were some personal accounts in the mid 20th century, which sounds so weird to say it that way, but in the 50s. Right, um, right. And oh my God, but this person, Alice, she got pregnant at 16 in 1963. She describes how ashamed her parents were when they found out. So it's not about, it's, it's, they're, they're ashamed of that, but it's, it's more about the shame than the sanctity, the sacredness of life. Whatever. Oh, of course. Right. Yeah. So her father physically abused her to try to get her to have an abortion. And she said, we lived in a house in Clifton, which had very steep stairs. My dad was there and he literally punched me in the stomach and pushed me down the stairs. Shit. How yeah. shitty is that? Because you're ashamed. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Totally. And that's what I was thinking about all the other ones, too, that are ridiculous. Like, we have to realize that the man was probably like, okay, I am exhausted. Thank you for the sex. Now you go jog six blocks to <laughs> knock my seat out. Right. Like, <laughs> they're still doing up. all. <laughs> Get those heels to your butt. Unbelievable. Believable, yet unbelievable. Well, yeah. I was telling Bonnie... Hey, let me do some of the modern ones. So I ended up texting my grown daughters, and oh, that no. was upsetting. <laughs> it was absolutely uh, a something I didn't appreciate at all because I thought, you know, they'll tell me, but I think it's the way that they told me. Let me it go was, look it up. It was very matter of fact. <laughs> It was. So I said, hey, um, I need your help for an episode. What are some weird myths or practices that the youngins do to avoid getting pregnant besides usual contraception? One writes, uh, back door. <laughs> like, All right. And then I'm like, I automatically regret this. And the other one says, people do it. And then she wrote, pull out. And then they're like, why do you ask? Then, my sweet, innocent little pumpkin that I named after Bonnie, it, she said, hey, don't forget about the Mormons who got armpit crabs like a year or two ago. So what? we've all heard what soaking is. And Wait, say it again because uh, I don't remember. Face. So soaking in Mormonism because they're not allowed to have sex, just like we weren't, quote, allowed to have sex. Oh, I remember. The okay. <laughs> Mormons, like the girl, would lay there and the guy would be on top of her and they'd be naked. But then their friends would jump on the bed to actually make the doodly go in the hoo-ha, but it wasn't really them doing it. They were So it's they just were, like this mental it was hand in glove, but thrusting was not allowed. But if somebody else okay, yeah. was doing if it. someone thrusted you, yeah. oy, then it was okay. So not right. only that, but then <laughs> there were armpit crabs oh because the armpit, if closed, I guess, can simulate a sort yeah. of vaginal opening. And Jedediah and Josiah, I guess, would be with their... Little Mormon <sighs> girlfriends, and yeah, give them STDs of the armpit. Wow. So thank you, daughters. We're thank you, never going to talk about that again. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so I looked at some of the modern things, and of course there is a bunch of them, and they're told with such sincerity. So I saw one that kept coming up, and it's called neem oil. And what? some people were saying... Exactly. N double E M. Buy it oh, okay. off Amazon. And you can either drink it or like this woman said, all you need to do, let me tell you, is she got a tampon and she put the neem oil and soaked oh, the tampon okay. and then you put the tampon up you. Now okay. I don't know if that is before or after sex, but that's supposed to do this stuff. Another is it's supposed to be a spermicide. Things. I guess so, but I don't know if it chases them to kill them or if it 
is a line of defense. If it's like Wonder Woman? I don't. With the, I with don't the know. wrists? Right. Pew, 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 pew. I like to say the, the word spermicide because I hope it triggers men. We're going to decide <laughs> your sperm. Uh, exactly. So there's this other thing, um, basically eating healthy. It says what? this one woman was like, <laughs> here are things to eat after you do the deed to prevent pregnancy. You've got papaya, okay, apricots, figs, pineapple, ginger. Eat so any of those. All those go in your, your human mouth. In your human mouth. So I would just think there would be a low birth rate in places where papaya or pineapple were the main foods of the people. Um, But we're not going to look at any studies because we're just going to believe this. So kids out there, please have intercourse with something you don't even like and then eat a Fig Newton. You'll be fine. Question, if the pineapple is on a pizza from Domino's, does that count? Is that enough? I think you have to put it on the tampon, too, for that (laughs) one. I don't know. I did hear the thing about the lemons because it said that Casanova used lemon rinds as a natural cervical cap. So, of course, Mm -hmm. he made the woman put it in there. There was a time when it was known that Australian teenagers used to scarf down candy bars and use the wrappers as makeshift condoms. Oh, which candy bar? And I like that because it's recycling. (laughs) (laughs) It ain't a chunky, I'll tell you. It's probably just a Tootsie Roll. Oh. There was definitely, there's still the whole jumping up and down, but this is my favorite squat and sneeze yeah yeah <laughs> as if they're all just gonna shoot down shoot on the floor out. <laughs> oh god did you hear about this one this one sounds like gwyneth paltrow you boil water and you put herbs in it and then you steam your vagina okay and i guess but i mean that's a high risk of burning. There's delicateness yeah. there. Yeah. Why don't we cauterize the tip of a guy's penis? That would <laughs> okay. All right. do it. <laughs> also, let me just bust in and say that all of these things, whether they are prophylactic or after <laughs> the fact, are time consuming. They're time consuming and they, you know, you have to get like a lot of supplies. Right. right. It's, and a lot of this, of course, is to prevent pregnancy. But how it ties into religion is because pregnancy is a big indication that you were having sex in the first place. And yeah. you're too scared to go to your parents and say, hey, can I have. You know, can you take me to get the pill or can you find me condoms somewhere because of the whole religious thing? Or Um, I was thinking this earlier today. This means that people were out there not abstaining for a long fucking time. Not everybody was always obedient to a religion and to the rules. Yeah, yeah. And they want to, like when we picture the 50s, in the 60s, when America was 90% said they were Christian then, down to 63 probably 62% now, but that it was this squeaky clean, you know, wholesome everything that was going on. Yeah. And obviously, we know that it definitely wasn't. And let me say that all the way through history, probably up to the 70s, Thanks to some doctors that I'll think of the name, Myers, and anyway, um, women were also doing all this without pleasure. So right. they're just <laughs> doing all of this. Um, okay, so there was one TikTok I came across, and I saw this twice, but this happened to be this one person. There were over 11,000 likes. And a bunch of comments like, oh, what do you think about this? 
and she does a little dance, and, she, and the words say how to prevent getting pregnant, the natural way, after sex, and she points P. No. It's a, it's a different hole, ladies, and definitely <laughs> men. It's a different <laughs> orifice. So P, take a shower. Right. Unless you're standing on your head taking a shower. <laughs> I don't even know how right. that. And then this is my favorite. Drink a lot of water and then sleep. <laughs> so you're just hydrated, <laughs> hydrating up all the sperm so they can race to get you pregnant. 11,000 likes on that one. That's people going, oh, I didn't know that. I will do that. Or, yes, I agree. I've tried that. And I don't realize I'm infertile and could have a tumor because I pee after I have sex, so I think everything's okay. I mean, it's so, the misinformation is dangerous. It's dangerous because they don't have resources. It's you're, you're tragic. What about the ones that are here that also, I mean, mm, there's some they, that know better, and they don't want to, they want an all-natural way. So there's some of those, but yes, yeah. and the others... Don't have resources. Well, someone named Dr. Dele, D-E-L-E, um, who I don't think is really a doctor that anyone wants to go to, <laughs> um, she was like, here, this is what I give my patients. She's like a natural something. And uh, she starts making a mixture, and it has parsley. It has cayenne. It just the same things that... People used to, in the 90s, put in that gross diet drink. Everyone used to swig and just drink that all okay, the time. Okay, so it does she just, want them to uh, consume it or insert it? You drink it the day before. It says the day you, before. Meet, you meet with your, your friend and then the day after. Oh, okay. So, hey. so if you think you're going to get lucky, you just have to drink it every day. Right. Don't you think they would be serving it at bars if it were? Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't you just be like, I'll have the Dr. Dele. To go backwards in time just a little bit, I just came across something. I didn't know that Ireland made illegal contraception from 1935 till 1979. In fact, it said like it went to a vo vote in 1985, which is... Pretty recent. So recent. <laughs> it really is. But they're um, super uber Catholics. Yeah, because that was, I mean, again, sort of state religion there. I'm going to end it on They didn't even believe just, Sinead O'Connor. They did not. And she and knew what was the up. day. Yep. Um, and then let's just go over the likely myths that people hear and that the Cleveland Clinic hears, and they have to write it down so that right. people don't think it's true. <laughs> Myth. I can't get pregnant if I'm having dry sex, which is the act of sexual motions while still wearing clothes. And the doctors have to say, just like my dad put the article on my toilet seat when I was a teen, God, stop. that any time the penis and vagina come into contact and there is fluid, it's, it's the seminal fluid that can get near there, then enjoy baby naming. Um, but but if, it, if it has to go through a pair of khakis, isn't it filtered? I think so. And then you name your kid Denim. No, it is. Uh, I don't think that's a huge possibility, but it could be. I mean, there has to be a lot of maneuvering and a lot of gaps in the clothing, I would think. Yeah. For, and for isn't it to happen. Underpants. <laughs> Here's another one I can't get pregnant by having sex in the pool. Fact. You can get pregnant in any kind of water. <laughs> Bath, hot tub, hot tub. Lake. <laughs> lake, lake. 
What if you got pregnant by someone else in the lake? Stop. We have seen boys. I'm not joking, Bonnie. What if you're just swimming with the youth group and there's always that one guy that's off to himself but among people? You don't know what he's doing under that dirty water. And the next thing you know, you have Stephen's baby. I just keep thinking about tiny fishes. Ow. Yeah. Ah. That's not good. Um, here's another favorite, and this actually is scary. Sperm die once they hit the air. Fact. False. Sperm <laughs> can live for oh, three God. to five days if a warm, moist environment is available. They only die when dry. Now, I guess I knew that, but... Why would, you, why would you retain that fact? True. But that goes back to the, you know, getting in a hot tub or sitting on the side of the pool. or I don't know. I don't know. Or, but, or um, making sure you wash your reusable condom. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're <laughs> made out of intestines or whatever right. it is. Lord. But or candy yeah, bar this, wrappers. Uh, gosh. <laughs> so this all goes back to, of course, the whole idea of religion and all that. I'm so glad that now people mostly are educated about this stuff. And please let Planned Parenthood stay in business because they're giving out condoms left and right. They're giving out education. And the current women who are in their 20s on TikTok making you potions and telling you to put oil on a tampon scare the shit out of me. Yeah, and P.S., if you're not going to use one of the things that we have as a resource here, like a condom or spermicide that's simple to produce because you're too religious to use those or you don't want to mm. acknowledge that you're having sex, you're looking for a loophole. If you're right. if Absolutely. you're looking for something that is stored in your refrigerator at home at night that you can I, secretly right. use Coca-Cola, that's a loophole. Yeah. And I told you that we have very Catholic friends and they didn't want to have more kids. So they wrote the archdiocese and they said, okay, you can start using contraception, or no, you can get a vasectomy because you wanted to get. And I was like, oh, that's all you have to do if you're Catholic? Right. <laughs> so obviously there are different kinds of Catholics and right. all that. There are denominations within that. But be in that one if you are. <laughs> the other thing, I was looking at a map of the world and different things and the popular things that people use Guess what the number one contraception in the world is? Pulling out. Um, it is not. It <laughs> is female sterilization. Oh, yeah. This always but aggravates that surprised me. surprised me. Like, again, hey, woman, you're in charge. And then it's, you know, the pill and condoms and all that stuff. But um, oh, this this was very upsetting because from what I understand, my limited knowledge, it is more painful and more in depth for a woman to go through it than it is for a man to have a correct. vasectomy. And yeah, a, a good friend of mine, she had hers done and he didn't have his done. And I'm like, get his done. I don't need any more yeah. of him on the earth. You, I have a million times more, but not him. Anyway. Absolutely. Oh, it makes me Um, sound like I hate men, but I don't. I just don't like him so much. Okay, sorry. I think maybe we should all just find one good man. And then... (laughs) Then he gets to go to town. Store that in a warm, moist place. And then just dole it out to women who want to have kids. And deny a lot of men from having sex. That's what I think. Okay. Yeah. We'll we'll, we'll work on that as a platform for you. Yeah. Now, remember, kids, 
The best way not to have an unwanted pregnancy is only abstinence and abstinence only. And since that's being taught, and I think 17 states and teachers can actually get fined $500 for saying anything about contraception or LGBT stuff, um, you in those states also have the highest unwanted teen pregnancies. So wrap it up. And (laughs) if you need help getting contraception, you need to find... Please don't put anything in the hoo-ha or, or <laughs> make any weird juices, please. Especially out of poop. And also, <laughs> right. I would be curious to know what the generation that is your daughter's age right now, and without asking them directly, do they even care about sex anymore? If they don't, oh. if they don't see each other in person, if they're all on social media? Do they care? Do you think they have sex on social media? No, no, no. I'm saying they're always on social media instead of in person with each other, you know, rubbing up against no, one another over still, their khakis. Yes. <laughs> the youths are still doing all that. The youths. Um, they, yes, they're still doing that. And some popular contraceptions are, of course, the pill, but they also have implants like that go in your arm. Um, there's the female condom, which, yeah. yep. And then Nuvo Ring. Uh, I came across a lot of these in my research. And oh, there's a patch too. So I mean, just, it, wait, it's you mean actually, it just, it just goes, it goes over your whole over vagina. The vagina. <laughs> <laughs> oh, on that note, thanks, guys. <laughs> Adios. Rate and review. (laughs) Yup. Don't get pregnant or be the next Mary. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.